Thank you, thank you. Hey, I'm uh, Marcus from Scene There. We make a video platform for interactive 360 videos. And some of you might have heard about our first virtual model of Pyongyang in North Korea. It was featured in Wired. We got a lot of publicity for that one. Because VR is really like teleportation. Uh, with 360 video, you can feel like you are there. You can understand something, and you can learn something in a deeper way. And um, the problem right now with 360 cameras is that the viewer is grounded to the position of the camera. He cannot move around. So we're solving that by introducing interaction to the videos. And this is how it looks like. You're starting out with an overview. This is from Loyolo here in uh, last summer. All the blue dots down there are places that we filmed on. And when you watched it for two seconds by gazing on it, you fly down and the video starts playing. And you feel the atmosphere. You can see the people moving. You can see the shimmering of the water. And you can see the links to the other videos. So you can move around in this world. It's fully interactive. And um, we're now launching the mobile editor that makes this super simple to create. So this is how our users are creating uh, awesome experiences. You capture with the 360 camera and our v uh, mobile app. You upload it to our cloud, who then links all the videos based on the metadata together. And then they can publish it both on web and on virtual reality headsets. And 360 video is easy, but making it interactive is hard. And this is the simple mobile editor that we launched this week. It's really like super simple. It's a unique solution because it links it all automatically. It's uh, a cross-platform both for web and for VR. And the playback is really optimized for interactivity. We're live on desktop, on web, and for mobile, three platforms. And we believe there's a huge market for this because brand campaigns built on 360 has a 46% viewer high, higher view count. And the markets that we'll see initial traction in is tourist market for showing an atmosphere of a place. Uh, manufacturing to show where your food is produced or like whatever you're producing is produced. Uh, and obviously real estate, as we lower the prices, we can go in and automate the whole uh, thing there. We're doing great today. Some big brands already using our technology. We have 100,000 100, euro revenue. Uh, out of 15% uh, uh, of that is software licenses. And we want to grow that in the next stage by doing our new scalable business model which, uh, where users leverage our user platform. Um, uh, and we believe 2 million in 2020. We have a kick-ass team. We've known each other for 20 years. My, I'm from Nokia. I teach VR at Singularity University. My co-founder founded uh, the physics platform, which was sold to NVIDIA. And we're raising 500K to scale our platform. And that's a nice end. Thank you so much, Marcus. We make VR real. Thank you. And judges, what's your verdict? Thank you very much. Seems very exciting. I like. I was a Foursquare user, very active, and uh, but something happened. So, how do you see this becoming as, as a community for individuals when the cameras become more? So, do you take care of that category as well? So everybody here becomes a user, Absolutely. And, and, and so there might be gamifying elements, and you can can you have you considered that in the community building of the platform? Absolutely. We believe we're super focused on 360 video, and we want to cater for the people that create interactive uh, experience today. But we want to democratize that so that it's super simple to do. Currently, we're in the first phase where we're actually doing the productions ourselves. We learned how to do this. We learned a lot during the two years. Uh, and then we want to scale it so other uh, professionals can create on our platform. And then we want to go B2C so that anyone can do this on our platform. And gamification is part of that, absolutely. Uh, you, you mentioned um, mobile VR. VR is a key component of this. Uh, the problem with VR is that we're still waiting and waiting and waiting for yeah. the usage to really tick up, right? So are you also just web? I mean, can you also just be on the web and view this? Or are you only VR? No, uh, we have both platforms. So our, play, our experiences plays back on the web as well in an interactive way. You can scroll, and then you see a hotspot. You can click on it, so you can explore it in this way. And this is a good way for brands to build, stay longer and explore the content. So we're both for web, and then we're, of course, waiting for the merge and the merge between the web and the VR so that you can switch seamlessly between the two platforms. Yeah. So, uh, and, um Personally, I'm not that big. I get a headache of VR. Sorry about that. But how, 
how about the, the alternative solution? The, can you use the same solution somehow in the, with these new phones of R, uh, uh, RR? So augmented reality, can you just build that in somehow the smartphones and, and use the same technology? Because it looked really, really nice. Yeah. So uh, without the VR glasses, is well, that a possibility? We're collecting the data with GPS coordinates. So you could map that into the real world. I mean, eventually, we believe we want to cover the world with uh, 360 cameras. We're just using. Uh, consumer facing uh, like consumer grade hardware and then uh, the metadata around that is what b we build our platform on top of so you could do that with augmentation as well in the glasses yeah so 2 million euros 2020 what would need to happen for this company to be you know 20 million or 200 million maybe not in 3 years time but 5 to 10 well, we believe, with our technical background, we believe we can create an experience that is so different from everything else that you can really move around in the video. And that's going to be a game changer, because then you can really move around and see the world. And uh, then that's uh, selling licenses to camera manufacturers, for example, or selling uh, to uh, this platform to big brands. So that is the sort of what we're thinking to get the, the revenue in from selling the uh, software as a service, sort of, in that sense. And of course, the adoption of 360 cameras. Yeah. So, um, I guess I love the idea of this. And I think 360 has totally changed the way I've done things like booking hotel rooms uh, and all this kind of stuff. But in reality, is this, how does this not just turn into something like JPEG or like a standard format or a standard process? Does this stuff not want to be free? Uh, we believe that we are creating that format and we are defining this new element, uh, th this new media. And um, uh, your question was about the licensing or about well, the, no, I the mean, media like being JPEG free? JPEG and all these other great, uh, yeah. great tools and technologies that have essentially democratized access yeah, yeah. to this stuff. Um, they don't make any money. Oh, that's standards, I think. Like compression will definitely be standardized and they will be... Um, but what we are doing is owning the interface towards publishing. So the editor, in the sense, the mobile editor, the way that people, the mental uh, thinking of when you want to publish something interactive in 360, Got then it. you, you go to us. You want to be the us. Photoshop uh, of, for VR. Uh, you Over. could say, yeah, like or iMovie. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Marcus. Thanks.